Hello everyone, welcome to Math with Allison. Today we're continuing our series on limits. If you haven't already, make sure to check out some of my past videos. Click that little eye in the corner, it'll get you there. Otherwise, today we are talking about oscillation and what that looks like with different types of limits. So let's go ahead and move into it. Of course, we have a visual representation to see. We have the blue function is sine of x and the red function is cosine of x. So what it means to be oscillating is that it's continuously changing between two values. This one is always stuck between y equals positive 1 and y equals negative 1. It's always going to be oscillating between those two values. So if we take the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of cosine of x of sine x, we're not going to get an actual value because it's oscillating forever. It is continuously changing values. So we write this as these limits do not exist. Because we can't equal a million numbers at the same time. We can't be two numbers at the same time. We can only be one number. So when it's oscillating, the limit does not exist. So let's go ahead and view some examples of this. First, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of sine of x divided by x. So let's go ahead and look at our numerator. We know as x goes to infinity, this is going to be oscillating between negative 1 and 1. So what I mean by that bracket is that it's some number between negative 1 and 1. So if we look at our denominator, we know that the limit as x approaches infinity of any number over x is going to go to 0, right? As our denominator gets really, really large, 1 over big goes to 0. So really what this is saying is we have some number a relatively small number in this case between negative 1 and 1 divided by a really big number. And so this is going to end up going to 0. And that's how we can identify this limit. Let's see another example. We have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side, so from the positive side, of cosine of 1 over x. First, let's go ahead and look at our inside. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right of just 1 over x. So when we approach 0 from the right side, our denominator gets really, really small. So we get 1 over a small positive number, which blows up to infinity. If you want to figure out why, I have the video linked right here. You can go ahead and check it out. I go over that in greater detail. So this is very similar to the limit as x goes to infinity of cosine of x, because that inside is going to infinity. And like we talked about earlier, this does not exist, which means I can fill that in for the actual limit. We have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side of this function does not exist. Let's look at another example. We have something very similar, but now we're multiplying it by x. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side of x times some number between negative 1 and 1, right? That's what we talked about earlier. Except this x is approaching 0. So this is like 0 times some number. Whenever you multiply anything times 0, it equals 0. So this limit is actually going to go to 0. So we have an oscillating function times a linear function. And when it goes to 0, that 0 is going to be stronger. Let's go ahead and see another example. We have the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of 3 times sine of 3 over x squared minus 9. Always what I suggest trying to do is factoring at all. So limit as x approaches 3 from the left. And let's go ahead and look at our issue. What is our issue number? And I can see as I approach 3 is going to approach 1 over 0, which is illegal, right? We cannot have this happening. Big no-no. So now let's think about which side of 0 are we approaching. If I choose a number just to the left of 3, I'm going to choose 2.9, and I'm going to plug that in here, because all I care about is if it's positive or negative. So 2.9 minus 3 is equal to negative 0.1. So I'm approaching 0 from the left side, from the negative side. So let's go ahead and use this in my entire limit. I'm going to rewrite it. So I know this is approaching 0 from the left side. This right here, if I plug in 3, I just get 3 plus 3, which is equal to 6. So, and then the 3 in the numerator doesn't change at all. And so this is very similar, and I'm going to scroll down, to the limit as x 
approaches zero from the left side of three times sine of three over x, right? Because that denominator is approaching zero just from the negative side. So that means this is going to blow up to negative infinity. So again, if I rewrite, like, rewrite my limit, I get x approaches negative infinity of 3 times sine of x, right? Because 3 over 0 from the right side goes to negative infinity. So again, this is going to be an oscillating function because as x goes to negative infinity, sine of x is just oscillating between negative 1 and positive 1. And so I end up getting this entire limit does not exist. So if I go back up to my original limit, all I have to write out is that it does not exist. So that's all I have for us today on oscillating functions. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and any comments of types of videos you'd like to see, content problems, whatever. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching.